Presenting officer, the Scottish Government's failure to get to grips with the NHS waiting times is costing lives. In February, my colleague Faisal Chowdhury raised the case of Anne Sinclair, who was waiting for cancer treatment. Anne, a previous cancer survivor, waited seven months for a diagnosis, at which point she was told she had an aggressive form of cancer. She was then forced to wait more than five months for treatment. We know that the sooner you are diagnosed, and the sooner you start treatment, the more likely you are to survive. Anne tragically died this summer. Her last words to her son, Ricky, were, keep fighting, tell my story. We need to stop this happening to anyone else. I love you. First Minister, in February, you said Anne's case was unacceptable, a word you've used at least six times already this afternoon. If it's, un if it's unacceptable, why is it still happening to others? First Minister. Well, firstly, I want to convey uh, my sincere condolences uh, to Anne's loved ones, uh, to her family and her friends. Uh, obviously, I, I don't know uh, all of the circumstances uh, of her situation, but I do know uh, what was narrated to me in the Chamber uh, previously. Uh, it is the case uh, that individual uh, experiences where uh, the treatment uh, or the care on the NHS is not what all of us expect, then that is unacceptable, and I'm never going to stop saying that. Uh, that does not change the fact that for the overwhelming majority of people in this country, the NHS delivers an outstanding service. Cancer is a clinical priority. Cancer uh, should always be a clinical priority. We have uh, two key uh, waiting times uh, standards on uh, the NHS for cancer care. Uh, for the 31-day uh, decision to treat to first uh, treatment uh, and the 62-day uh, target. Uh, more people now uh, than has been the case before are being seen uh, on those urgent pathways uh, and we continue to invest in cancer services and we continue to invest, of course, in the early diagnosis of cancer. So these uh, issues are uh, a priority. I don't shy away from, I will never shy away uh, from the serious uh, challenges and pressures on our National Health Service. That is why it is so incumbent uh, on government to support the National Health Service with the investment and the other forms of support that it needs, and we will always uh, do that for the sake of patients uh, like Anne uh, and, of course, the many other patients who depend on the National Health Service each and every day. Anna Sarwar. Sir, Anne's case isn't an isolated one or an individual one. Here's another. A 56-year-old man in Western Bartonshire first went to his doctor with back pain in autumn 2020. He was prescribed pain kindles and told to visit a physio. Six months later, he was passing blood and being violently sick. He called an ambulance, but was told twice that they wouldn't attend because his condition wasn't life-threatening. So he got himself to A&E and eventually had a CT scan. It showed a large tumour that had spread to his spine. He died a year after first seeking help from the NHS. This demonstrates a systemic failure and what happens when services and staff are pushed to breaking point. First Minister, do you accept that your failure to get to grips with the NHS crisis is costing lives? First Minister. I take my responsibility to the NHS seriously uh, every single day. The pressures on our NHS are well known. That is why the support we are giving to our NHS is so important. Uh, that is the case uh, across all conditions uh, and all specialties in our National Health Service, but perhaps uh, even more particularly the case when it comes to cancer uh, care. Uh, I mentioned the two targets earlier on. Uh, in terms of the 31-day target, which to explain to people is the time uh, from a decision taken to treat uh, to the first treatment happening, uh, more than 95% uh, of patients are seen within that target. The 62 uh, the uh, target, which is uh, the whole referral uh, to treatment, that is much more challenging. Uh, but uh, almost eight out of ten are seen within that target, and more people are being seen through that uh, urgent pathway than has ever been the case before. Now, the reason um, I spent time talking about that is it is important, I think, for people to understand that for the vast majority, our NHS on cancer care and on everything else delivers an outstanding uh, service of clinical care. Clearly, that is not the case for everyone, particularly now given the pressures faced. That's why the responsibility I have, the Health Secretary has, uh, and the whole government has to make sure we are supporting the NHS is such a vital one. 
and one that we take so incredibly seriously. Anna Sarwar. A failure to get to grips with the NHS crisis is costing lives. And let's look at the facts. In the past year, 3,393 people waited more than the 62-day standard for urgent cancer treatment, a standard not met in 10 years and getting worse. That means lives lost. The worst a &E waiting times on record. In one month alone, 13,000 patients waited over eight hours. The Royal College of Emergency Medicine have warned that that means lives lost. This is a systemic failure on the SNP's watch. Staff are being failed, patients are being let down, lives are being lost. How many more families have to suffer? How many more tragic stories do we have to bring to this parliament before Nicola Sturgeon and Hamza Youssef do their jobs? First Minister. Firstly, presiding officer, on the 62-day uh, cancer target, um, if we look at the most recent quarter, more patients were treated on that 62-day pathway uh, than was the case uh, before uh, the pandemic. In the uh, last year that we have full year figures for, uh, more uh, people uh, were treated on that 62-day uh, pathway than I think uh, in any year since 2011. So our National Health Service, because of the investment, because of the recruitment of staff, is doing uh, more in many senses than it was before. Demand uh, is also increasing, uh, which is why we've got to continue to increase that support. So whether it's on uh, cancer care or accident emergency or ambulance service uh, response times, as uh, we have just been talking about, yes, there are very significant challenges. Those uh, challenges are often experienced by patients and they are felt every day by the staff who work in the front line of our National Health Service. But this is a government committed to supporting our National Health Service. There has never been a more difficult time to do so, but there has also never been a more important time to do so. And that's why we continue to take that responsibility so seriously. Move.